Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that talks about every boss, 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 and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always is, eh, pretty great, Will Hughes. Boss, 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 boss. Boss. Boss, uh, boss scads. Gary, yeah, go ahead. Nope, I just, that's all I know about him. Boss gags, boss, gags. boss nass. Boss nass, uh, undercover boss, boss baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boy, those are the bosses. Sh- uh, my my colleague Alex Alex McLeavy wrote about this once. But is there a show more bootlick than Undercover Boss? I I suggest there's not. It's really disgusting. It's it's a it's, it's a really foul show. The basic premise of the show is on the boss's side, and that's the most fucked up thing imaginable. What if they did the opposite, where an employee had to dress up as the boss? Hmm. And and go in and see what it's like to be the boss. Or or uh, like if we're gonna make like a, a legit thing, the employee dressed up like a big investor. Yes, uh, the boss's boss is looking boss. To, yeah, someone that the boss feels low status in comparison to. <laughs> or or the employee dressed up like a cop. Or the employee and showed up at the up boss's like outfit. Cop. Yeah, well, like swatted the boss. Yeah, you know? it's just the I w- premise of the I show that. is boss hurts employee. That's the, also the yeah. premise of American capitalism. It, yeah, it just it just is the thing. It's, a, it's such an obvious commercial. It's so fucking gross. Hey, I'm uh, my, yeah. I, I've heard my employees are maybe uh, taking rest yeah, breaks about, in the middle of the day. Yeah, I'm going to catch them doing it. The uh, My mom used to watch that show, and sometimes I go over there and have dinner and mm-hmm. and watch that. And, and she was just like, you know, uh, was not as woke, you know, as, sure. as <laughs> like as maybe I'm not trying to criticize mom. No, for not speak being woke, more on that. But, criticize your mom's yeah. politics. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my mom's politics, not amazing. You know, she didn't have a chance yeah. to fully develop those. And uh, she'd just be like, ooh, he's going to get him. And she was just, you know, just appreciating on a going to get him level. Yeah. Which I, which I understand. That That's yeah. what that's what the show works best on, is like a going to get him. Mm-hmm. You know? But once you know any of the context, it's disgusting. Was your mom into Catch a Predator? Uh, she did watch To Catch a Predator. And it was basically the same thing, like, ooh, <laughs> look at him. Look at <laughs> him. Like, yeah. Gonna get him. <laughs> he's going to get him. <laughs> Gonna get him. get him. And then we'd watch American Idol and, and like somebody would sing bad. My mom would be like, oh yeah, Paula's going to get him. Who's Paul? She loved watching people. Uh, Paula. Paula's going to Paula, get him. Paula, okay. Not Wasn't Paul Paula is. Paula traditionally Paula. the nice one? Uh, she was nice, but sometimes she'd get him. That's because she was drunk out of her mind uh, well, on that show. It was obvious. It was a conspiracy theory, but it was obvious to anyone watching it. Well, uh, you know, Simon Cowell wouldn't stop smoking. I, I wouldn't. I, I could have to be drunk to be next to that dude anyway as well yeah. uh, of course it's boss sunday there is more to life than boss so take a chance and face the boss an open road and a road that's hit brand new boss around the boss we're talking about uh weird fucking boss man uh i th- it's so interesting, but I get exhausted when he shows up now, and I feel bad about that because well, it's, it's such a cool idea. Well, by like default, it's going to take like at least a minute to do. This is a this is Great yeah. Gideon. Mm-hmm. Great uh, Gideon is big... basically what if uh, you had to do a level of greed mode in the middle of your regular Isaac run? Yes, or or a, a, a trap room like one of those rooms that you get trapped in. Like the game already has this. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's a big stone face. Um, you know, pretty cool looking. Hangs out. Oh, is that, the room's that's, always that's the same. Face. That's a face. Callbacks. <laughs> uh, the room's always tall and narrow, and he hangs out at the top and spits lava and shit. He does, does a couple like of that. different things to make life harder for you. He can he can break. He can like literally like break cat blah break cracks in the floor. Yes. I, I, Daddy breaks cracks in the floor. In the floor. Daddy Boss breaks cracks in the breaks floor cats. with his red leather, yellow leather. Uh, he also will suck in Rintintin Ramblin'. And then he mm-hmm. will uh, spit out a bunch of rocks and stuff. But the main feature of this is summoning waves of enemies. Gary, can we take That's a pause you. and uh, just do some... I know we're at the very tail end of this week. Can we do a couple vocal warm-ups just to make sure the rest of this episode goes smooth? Because I <laughs> did mush mouth at some stuff there. Yeah, I, I this is... Uh, it's never occurred to me to do vocal warm-ups. I, I usually just it, say stuff like, Paula's going to give him. 
and it, Paul, it doesn't. Paul, it doesn't Paul's sound like, gonna get him. Yeah, Paul's your way of be, yeah. saying Paula Abdul will be cruel to this person. Yeah, Paula Abdul will be cruel to this person. Paula oh Abdul will be cruel to this person. Gary, what if we're gonna get back to the vocal warm ups thing? But what if on an episode of American Idol they had brought out MC Scat Cat? Oh, as like a guest judge or MC nope. Scat Cat had to sing and Paul yeah, Abdul yeah. was forced to confront. Yeah. Yeah. That's real good. And, 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 you know, you know, dog, it's just not very, it's a little pitchy dog. It's not very good. You know, and she's just like glaring at Ru- Ruben stuttered. Yeah. For talking about her guy. man. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think their kids are like? Gross, right? Half human, half noid hybrids. No, they adopted. Oh, okay. That was, that was big of them. That's, I mean, that's good. They you know? they were they're genetically incompatible, bud. They they didn't yeah. have a choice. It was kind of, you know. It's a fan, it's still you know, a good thing. Even if you, if you're doing a good thing under duress, is it still a good thing? No. This is the warm up. No. You know? Interesting. Not okay. Not remotely. So if you cannot have kids, uh huh, and you adopt, you're that is not that a virtuous act. Reasons. Interesting. So the motivation uh-huh. is the soul arbiter of what makes something virtuous gary that is the uh moral stance i have decided i have today that is uh, purposes of making this conversation interesting that uh that follows so well with you and everything i know about you and your personality and it's ever shifting culture you know moral mores that i'll accept it gary the the point is i don't have a personality i just have what would make this conversation less boring for me no i know it it's it's a the the trick with you yeah. is that it is it is hard to tell when that is on and when it's off. Yeah. Because you're you're now going to reply like it's always on, but that's not true. Uh I know it's not true. I seen it. Um the uh so that it's, is the that is the will trick. Is it's, is it's, the signaling, it needs more signaling. It's like you're like a, a difficult old video game that is good <laughs> once you know the mechanics, but you have to read the manual. Thanks, uh, to make it work. And the manual is like 170 pages and most of it is spells from second edition D and D. I'm Mylon secret castle. You, you are, you are Mylon secret castle of men. What I think about a lot is there's a line from Douglas Adams, uh, where the character Trillian is thinking about the character Zaphod Beeblebrox and in pointing out that it was very hard to tell when he was being, uh, clever, when he was being stupid in order to not have to think about anything or being stupid to hide the fact that he was clever or just being genuinely stupid. Yeah. And also he doesn't know either. That is uh, that seems very accurate. Even though I do think that, you know, I think that's, that's the difference. So, uh, uh anyway, time will uh, tell. Time will tell. Uh, Lion face, Arr, lemon face, Ugh. exercises. So this is a boss version of the grimace enemies, basically. It's re- real weird, and it operates as such because those things are just turrets that make an existing room difficult. Yes, and that's what this guy does as well. I will say that I can't hate him because he contains my favorite secret in the game, mm-hmm. which is if you hit him with a chaos card, you get to go inside his body and get items and stuff. That's very cool. It's one of my favorite. Like, will this work? Oh shit! Like, coolest thing that's ever happened to me in this video game. Yeah, I love to it. Be- we kind of improved over it. Uh, to be clear, what happens here is that uh, there are six waves of enemies you have to beat, uh, mostly pulled from the mines in the ash pit. This guy can only show up in the mines. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, once you beat all six waves, uh, he just dies. And yes. you can't hurt him he, any other way. He made Nostrias and just uh, decides to shovel off. Shovel off his old um, mortal coil. Yeah, that mortal coil. It's not great. It's mortal better than mortal portal. shell. Mm, I guess. I guess it is life in general, which yeah. contains mortal shell. Mm-hmm. So, by definition, it would have to be better. A real virtuous cycle. It's like how a fortune cookie is better than a fortune, by definition. Hmm. Because it contains it. I guess so, but the the fortune's always soggy. Yeah, you. Uh, that's how you go for a fortune cookie, eh? What do you mean? I I put it in my mouth. I chew gently yep. and then pull the fortune out like a person does. Yeah. Yeah. I tie it uh, into a knot with my tongue mm-hmm. to show off for potential lovers. Even though so. you're like, you know, blatantly underage and the actors are too uncomfortable for that plot line to go forward. So eventually they just bring in uh, Heather Graham. 
Exactly. Never actually watched and that show. It, Never actually watched Twin Peaks. It's a, I watched it a long time ago when mm-hmm. it was going around on VHS. And then I tried to do a rewatch and stalled out in season two, which Twin Peaks fans will tell you season two is bad. I think mm-hmm. that they underestimate how bad it is. I think that there's some weird kind of apologism for how shitty that season is. It's so boring. It stopped my run up to try to watch the return. Yeah. Which is like, the I finest to... film of 2018 or whatever. Yeah. Everyone, everyone loves that show and I'm sure it's good, but God is Twin Peaks season two wretched. Like it's, it's, it's not puzzle. just bad compared puzzle. to the first. It's bleh. Bleh. Gary, bleh. Uh, can we do a quick chess puzzle? Sure. Okay. So there's a chat. Uh, imagine a chessboard in your mind, please. Yep. Done. Okay. Uh, now uh, on square B7, there's a black knight. Okay. On square A2, uh, there's a white knight. Okay. Uh, and on square F4, there's a predator. Okay. Where do you have to place can, the xenomorph in order for either of the knights to survive? Can I ask a question? Please. What's chess? If people enjoy this show, Gary, what should they do? <laughs> go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and uh, give us some money and then go to uh, also rating review town and leave us five star reviews and by rating and review town gary means podcast addict <laughs> or apple podcasts yes the two places we typically look for reviews yeah uh, they might be other way we don't know absolutely we don't want to know here's a, here's a five star review from austin a paul i guess it's my turn in this podcast william huge and gary butterfield work hard towards their goal what is their goal and how do you define the word hard wink wink If you're like me, this is a question you will ask yourself midway through almost every episode of this podcast or sexual encounter. Look, here's the deal. I don't know how they've done it, but I love this show. Umbasa. End review. Aldia. Good night. Five stars. Gary, I think it's uh, violent when people fuck with my name and not yours. I I was going to ask you what you thought of that. I, 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 I get that your name is much easier to make fun of so maybe people feel like they got to put put thumb on the scale it's too obvious yeah. it's so cruel to to life to make you both fat and have the, the word butter in your name isn't it though my parents should have thought better of that really they should have had a thinner kid yeah yeah i mean and <laughs> the, uh, that's one of those things that my mom never got around to reflecting on <laughs> A, a wonderfully warm image of what your mom was going to get to. I, I, I actually have been uh, going through a mom renaissance of just really <laughs> feeling affectionate you know, towards yeah. my mom, like yeah. thinking of cute things that she did and just feeling like really warm and fuzzy, like all the time about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to make it clear to her ghost that this is purely for comedy. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, and yeah. you know, the dead are easy to feel affectionate toward. They can't hurt you anymore. But. <laughs> It's a pretty good moral for the end of every episode to Guppy, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, bleak. Bleak.